Grand Duchess Elizabeth Feodorovna of Russia, born Princess Elizabeth of Hesse and by Rhine, was born on 1st of November 1864 as the second child of Ludwig IV, Grand Duke of Hesse and by Rhine, and Princess Alice, daughter of Queen Victoria. Though she came from one of the oldest and most noble houses in Germany, Elizabeth and her family lived a rather modest life by royal standards. The children swept the floors and cleaned their own rooms, while their mother sewed dresses herself for the children. In the autumn of 1878, diphtheria swept through the Hesse household, killing Elizabeth's youngest sister, Marie, on 16th November, as well as her mother, Alice, on 14th December. Elizabeth had been sent away to her paternal grandmother's home at the beginning of the outbreak, and she was the only member of her family to remain unaffected. When she was finally allowed to return home, she described the meeting as terribly sad and said that everything was like a horrible dream. When Elizabeth was a young woman, her cousin, Prince Wilhelm of Prussia, later Wilhelm II of Germany, fell in love with her. In April 1875, the 16-year-old Wilhelm visited Darmstadt to celebrate Princess Victoria of Hesse and by Rhine's 12th birthday and first expressed interest in the 11-year-old Elizabeth. He wrote in a letter to his mother that, If God grants that I may live till then, I shall make her my bride once, if you allow it. When he was a student at Bonn University, he often visited his Aunt Alice and his Hessian relatives on the weekends. During these frequent visits, he fell in love with Elizabeth, writing numerous love poems and regularly sending them to her. He proposed to Elizabeth in 1878, but she rejected him. She had numerous other admirers. Ultimately, it was a Grand Duke of Russia who would win Elizabeth's heart. Elizabeth's great-aunt, Empress Maria Alexandrovna of Russia, was a frequent visitor to Hesse. During these visits, she was usually accompanied by her youngest sons, Sergei and Paul. Elizabeth had known them since they were children, and she initially viewed them as haughty and reserved. Sergei, especially, was a very serious young man, intensely religious, and he found himself attracted to Elizabeth after seeing her as a young woman for the first time in several years. At first, Sergei made little impression on Elizabeth. But after the death of both of his parents within a year of each other, Elizabeth sympathised with Sergei because she had felt this same grief after the death of her mother. Their other similarities, both were artistic and religious, drew them closer together. It was said that Sergei was especially attached to Elizabeth because she had the same character as his beloved mother. So when Sergei proposed to her in the spring of 1883, she accepted much to the chagrin of her grandmother, Queen Victoria, who tried to persuade Elizabeth to end the engagement. But when Sergei proposed again later in the same year, she accepted him once more, and arrangements for their wedding went ahead. Sergei and Elizabeth married on 15th June 1884 at the Chapel of the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg. Upon her conversion to Russian Orthodoxy, she took the name Elizaveta Feodorovna. It was at the wedding that Sergei's 16-year-old nephew, Tsarevich Nicholas, first met his future wife, Elizabeth's youngest surviving sister, Alex. The new Grand Duchess made a good first impression on her husband's family and the Russian people. Everyone fell in love with her from the moment she came to Russia from her beloved Darmstadt, wrote one of Sergei's cousins. The couple never had children of their own, but their Ilyinsko estate was usually filled with parties that Elizabeth organised especially for children. They eventually became the foster parents of Grand Duke Dmitri Pavlovich and Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna, Sergei's niece and nephew. Prince Felix Yusupov considered Elizabeth a second mother and stated in his memoirs that she helped him greatly during the most difficult moments of his life. On 17th of February 1905, Sergei was assassinated in the Kremlin by the socialist revolutionary Ivan Kaliaev. The event came as a terrible shock to Elizabeth, but she never lost her calm. 
It was as if her prophecy had come true that God will punish us severely, which she made after the Grand Duke expelled 20,000 Jews from Moscow by simply surrounding thousands of families' houses with soldiers and expelling the Jews without any notice overnight out of their homes and the city. Her niece Marie later recalled that her aunt's face was pale and stricken rigid, and she would never forget her expression of infinite sadness. In her rooms, said Marie, Elizabeth let herself fall weakly into an armchair, her eyes dry and with the same peculiar fixity of gaze. She looked straight into space and said nothing. As visitors came and went, she looked without ever seeming to see them. Throughout the day of her husband's assassination, Elizabeth refused to cry. But Marie recalled how her aunt slowly abandoned her rigid self-control, finally breaking down into sobs. Many of her family and friends feared that she would suffer a nervous breakdown, but she quickly recovered her equanimity. After Sergei's death, Elizabeth wore mourning clothes and became a vegetarian. In 1909, she sold off her magnificent collection of jewels and other luxurious possessions. Even her wedding ring was not spared. With the proceeds, she opened the convent of Saints Martha and Mary and became its abbess. She soon opened a hospital, chapel, pharmacy and orphanage on its grounds. Elizabeth and her fellow nuns worked tirelessly among the poor and the sick of Moscow. She often visited Moscow's worst slums and did all she could to help alleviate the suffering of the poor. For many years her institution helped the poor and the orphans in Moscow by fostering the prayer and charity of devout women. In 1916, Elizabeth had what was to be her final meeting with her sister Alexandra, the Tsarina, at Tsarskoye Selo. While the meeting took place in private, the tutor to the Tsar's children apparently recalled that the discussion included Elizabeth, expressing her concerns over the influence that Grigory Rasputin had over Alexandra and the imperial court, and begging her to heed the warnings of both herself and other members of the imperial family. In 2010, a historian claimed that Elizabeth may have been aware that the murder of Rasputin was to take place, and secondly, she knew who was going to commit it when she wrote a letter and sent it to the Tsar, and two telegrams to Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich and her friend Zinaida Yusupova. The telegrams, which were written the night of the murder, reveal that Elizabeth was aware of who the murderers were before that information had been released to the public and she stated that she felt that the killing was a patriotic act. In 1918, Vladimir Lenin ordered the Cheka to arrest Elizabeth. They then exiled her first to Perm, then to Yekaterinburg, where she spent a few days and was joined by others. The Grand Duke Sergei Mikhailovich, Princes John Konstantinovich, Konstantin Konstantinovich, Igor Konstantinovich, and Vladimir Pavlovich Paley. Grand Duke Sergei's secretary, Fyodor Remez, and Varvara Yakovleva, a sister from the Grand Duchess's convent. They were all taken to Alapayevsk on 20th May 1918. At noon on 17th July, Cheka officer Pyotr Startsev and a few Bolshevik workers came to the school. They took from the prisoners whatever money they had left and announced that they would be transferred that night to the upper Sinyachikensky factory compound. The Red Army Guards were told to leave and Cheka men replaced them. That night the prisoners were awakened and driven in carts on a road leading to the village of Sinia Chika, some 11 miles from Alapayevsk, where there was an abandoned iron mine with a pit 20 metres deep. Here they halted. The Cheka beat all the prisoners before throwing their victims into this pit, Elizabeth being the first. Hand grenades were then hurled down the shaft, but only one victim, Fyodor Remes died as a result of the grenades. According to the personal account of Vasily Ryabov, one of the executioners, Elizabeth and the others survived the initial fall into the mine, prompting Ryabov to toss in a grenade after them. Following the explosion, he claimed to have heard Elizabeth and the others singing an orthodox hymn from the bottom of the shaft. Unnerved, Ryabov threw down a second grenade, but the singing continued. Finally, a large quantity of brushwood was shoved into the opening and set alight, upon which Ryabov posted a guard over the site and departed. 
Early on 18th of July 1918, the leader of the Alapayevsk Cheka, Abramov, and the head of the Yekaterinburg Regional Soviet, Beloborodov, who had been involved in the execution of the imperial family, exchanged a number of telegrams in a pre-arranged plan, saying that the school had been attacked by an unidentified gang. A month later, Alapayevsk fell to the White Army of Admiral Alexander Kolchak. Lenin welcomed Elizabeth's death, remarking that virtue with the crown on it is a greater enemy to the world revolution than a hundred tyrant czars.